guys, how's it going? My name is Jeff, and I'm here with a very recognizable face, Jim Owens, who is the Mustang brand manager. So we have the Dark Horse next to us, obviously, and then we actually have the GTs behind us as well. So do you mind sharing some of the new information that has since been released about these very exciting Mustangs? Absolutely, and I love being here at Barrett-Jackson and doing the stuff here mm -hmm. at the world's greatest collector car That's auction. Right. Yeah. And what better place to display some of these new Mustangs? And in Florida, one of the first places that they're here in person, yeah. and we get to show them here and I can't wait to talk to you about it. 500 horsepower out of this vehicle. Naturally aspirated, the highest horsepower we've produced out of our Coyote motors. Now our Shelby's had 760 horsepower, mm -hmm. 1314 had 662, you know, Shelby GT350 with the flat plane crank in the 5.2 had 526. But to get 100 horsepower per liter, out of a naturally aspirated yes. coyote motor is a lot of fun. I mean, especially for people here. Like when you're down here and you're throwing that exhaust and you're rolling into that throttle pedal and you're like in the gas pedal and you're like hearing that, what better way than on this vehicle to do, you know, and demonstrate that 500 horsepower and that naturally aspirated, that rumble that makes it, that makes it have a lot of fun. Couple of things on the dark horse that I love to talk about, right? Sure. It has to be first unmistakably Mustang, mm -hmm. right? We've had six generations before us. It has to be able to be recognized immediately as that, but then it also has to look into the future, right? That sure. seventh generation. To bring folks into the sports car segment that aren't as old as me, right? I'm 59, I'm as old as the Mustang is. <laughs> I'm in need of a full frame off rotisserie restoration. <laughs> but, you know, we want to bring in some younger audience, people sure. like you, to bring into this car and to bring into the sports car car segment and you know unlike some of our competitors we're unveiling a brand, you know, all new 2.3 liter EcoBoost motor that has mm -hmm. 315 horsepower a fourth generation Coyote motor so we're in the internal combustion engine as well as you know, Mustang Mach-E GT mm -hmm. 0 to 60 faster than the GT 500 um, that's what we think the customers our sports car customers want that choice of power and given what we've seen here so far with the hot laps and the Mach-E GT and the Mustang Mach 1 I think people really appreciate it but oh absolutely that that engine in here is is just the heart and soul of it. But looking forward, we want to bring those younger people in. And that seventh generation from the front, you see the snout kind of comes down a little bit. Yeah. Right? Up over there. And a lot of the Mustang folks, you know, everybody has their opinion and has their favorite generation. Sure. Um, but it's unmistakably Mustang with that short lip over the front wheel, just mm -hmm. a little bit different snout as it goes down. And what we were trying to do in Eddie Kahn and you know, Del Zio and Terzis and Victor Condoli, the team who was doing the vehicle engineering behind it, worked it to get to be the lowest coefficient drag Mustang we've ever had. Oh, wow. Along okay. with, on the performance base, the highest downforce that we've had. That's impressive. Which is impressive in there. And that's where that snout comes from. But unmistakably Mustang, you see the three, like, pony tri-bar, right? You have the three tri-bar piece. Mm. You have the three lights that are on there. Sure, And yeah. this is normally where Patrick hits the little unlock button and does the little flashing <laughs> lights for us, right? But, um, you know, and then different things that would bring some of the folks in. Like the approach lighting, right? You can literally walk up and it will recognize that you're coming. And I believe it's within 50 feet and it goes through a sequence to welcome you and then projecting under there instead of the okay. pony projection lamps, which we had on sixth generation. Uh -huh. I think it was sixth gen we brought that in. Yeah, sixth generation, the projection lamps. Now, like on the Shelby's in 21 and 22, you had the snake projected down. Here, you're gonna have that Dark Horse logo. Which is a new logo. Which is a new logo, which we can talk about in a bit. So, you know, things on Mustang thing that you know you really don't need when you're going to Kroger to go shopping mm -hmm. you know things like line lock and launch control a little unnecessary right? yeah but one of the cool things that you have is remote rev right so if you go to a car show or you come and bring your car to Barrett Jackson and you're down here and displaying your car and you want to walk up and just rev your engine you can do it from your remote key fob from far away and it'll take you through a sequence but especially with the active valve exhaust there that takes takes you through, you know, and takes you up into the RPMs. And it just, now you don't need that. No, it's a right? good party like, trick. But it's it's something fun that Mustang can do, and that hopefully yeah. will help bring folks in. 
Um, so the dual air snout, so you see here the air induction mm -hmm. under the engine, which I'm not opening. This is a pre-production sure. unit here. Yep. We have dual air boxes. That dual air boxes help that breathe better to get airflow so that you can get more efficient and get that horsepower that we got out of there. Now, on the 500 horsepower, we put some of the learnings in from the internals of the 5.2 of the GT500 motor in there to help that stout, that that solid 500 horsepower to get it out there. Yeah. But it starts with the air coming in. Now, if we go over here to the front fender, it's a little bit easier to see on the back. Sure. You mentioned the new, new Dark badge. Horse nomenclature. Yeah. Two things. One, it's our first new nameplate that we've done performance derivative in 21 years. Wow. Right? It was the, the bullet was the last one. Now we've done three generations already of bullet. Yep. Right? Since then, that's how long it's been. You know, we do Mach 1s and Boss 302s and Shelbys mm -hmm. and bullets and cow specials and pony packages. and But it's the first new one that we've brought forth to try to carry us into it. And it's called a dark horse because if you look at the definition, you know, if you go up online and search, the thing you didn't see coming, <laughs> right? So in the seventh generation Mustang, to do it, that was kind of where that nomenclature came from. Okay. But how they designed the forward-facing, first forward-facing pony we've done on the car. Right? Yeah. We've done the Tiffany Snake that is coiled and looked at you, the Pony Tri Bar that's running, you know, you have the Boss 302 and 429 and all that type of stuff in there. But you haven't had a forward-facing pony. Now, when a horse and the designers spent a ton of time on this, because you're changing the badge of a Mustang, it's pretty important. Yeah. So, if you think of it, the nostrils, as you can see how they've designed the nostrils down here, when a horse is, when a Mustang is actually running, when they start to go, their nostrils expand to be able to bring air in so that they can more efficiently generate that power. And with that 500 horsepower, the dual air box with the dual air induction in there, kind of reminiscent of that horse that's going forward to bring that, you know, bring that power and performance. Yeah. And it's kind of cool. And you'll see it on that the back. That is a cool like, detail. It's, it, and, and the designers took a lot of time with it. You know, that forward facing badge was big, like something really big. And, and changing it and it ties so well into the power and performance of the vehicle. Yeah, it's more than just a badge, great symbolism. Yeah, now, of course, and this is the appearance package, right? Okay. Um, it is blue ember color. It has a flip in it from a color perspective. I'm not the color engineer, but as sure. you walk around, what you see is like a bronzish or a, yes. like a tint to it. Yes. But then if you walk to this angle and you look here, it looks a little bit more bronzish or it looks darker here. It's, yeah. it's not changing color, but the light reflects the color differently. And that's only available on the appearance package on the Dark Horse. Okay. You won't see it on the rest of the Mustangs in the 24 model year. And that's one of, one of the cool things that we do. It's not like Mystic or Mystachrome like right. we used to do, Yes, but it gives that different coloring in here. The Brembo calipers, unique color for the appearance package with the grabber blue lettering on it. Oh, okay. Um, and then you'll see on some of the other Mustangs as we go through, we're doing some different things. But again, the stopping power, like if you're going to put 500 horsepower on there and you want to be the preeminent five liter performance car we've ever done, naturally aspirated, then you have to be able to stop it. Yeah, those discs are huge. Yeah, and <laughs> not only are they large, uh, but they're the top hat and spoke kind of ones that we did on the 350. Ah, right, that's okay. Sit across the top. So you'll see the difference between the front and the back. Most of the weight's up front, right? When you're going in there, yep. all your heat's going to be generated in there. Um, but again, appearance and performance that can be personalized to your taste in the appearance package on it, which is, again, little details, but things that make that Mustang, you know, hopefully go into that next generation of ownership. So personalization. Sure. Um, you can see the wing on the back and, you know, the concave version of the Pony Tri-Bar, right? This yes. is the Tri-Bar lighting. Yep. And you have the sequential where it goes, you know, do, 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 when you turn on the, the, the directional on there. But those kind of line up to the angles as you see coming in. When you oh, look I at see. it from, from where, like, the camera kind of comes in, it, it's, right. again, a change. It's still unmistakably Mustang. Like carries the fastback through. Yeah. And, and the design. And it's... It looks wider, and the belt line's dropped about 10 mils, I think, 15 mils, but it gives you that, and the, 
the haunch, if it's you much will. Much more aggressive. Yeah, yeah it's mu it, much more. Like it, 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 the power comes from like when you're an offensive lineman, right? And or yo, and where you play rugby, right? You're in that four point stance. Your power's coming from that section. That's where the power comes from, the Mustang, and that girth kind of gives it that that width, kind of gives it that that powerful haunch going forward, which we really like. Um, this is the performance pack wing with the gurney flap that increases the downforce. So for the handling pack when you're on the track, when you can drive on the street, you can just pop it off yourself. There's three screws underneath there. Okay, that's... So you can take the gurney flap off of it. Um, and then on the performance pack, you can see the angle of the wing kind of going along with the angle of the car mm -hmm. between here. And, then, and it really kind of helps with not only aerodynamically, but visually on the car. Sure. And then the back horse that you can see, we can see that indentation in the nostrils kind of flaring a little bit, which we think is cool. The quad exhaust tips, Very right, nice. with the active valve exhaust, uh, that throaty rumble, like the noise, the, the noise, the sound, the music that comes out of those exhaust pipes across the generations are unique to each engine. Yeah, the Coyote's got a very unique it sound. It does. And then within this, between this Dark Horse version and the GT version, you're going to hear a different rumble, right? Like the 350 doesn't sound like anything on the planet, right? The 500 doesn't sound like anything on the planet. These Mustangs each have a sound, and we had done the black tips on there to kind of give it that more, you know, instead of the bright tips, to kind of give it more connection into that lower valence. Yeah, it fits the dark theme. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And from the back, and like we did some uh, video or shots at the New York Auto Show this week, this week, week before last, actually before Easter, <laughs> and it was the white with the black, not the appearance package. Okay. So that contrast mm -hmm. really made it look powerful in there. So again, sure. you can personalize it with your colors to kind of highlight certain things that are important to your personality or important to how you enjoy your Mustang, which is pretty cool. Now, my favorite part is the interior. Okay. Um, I know that's weird for me to say, right? I work for it's Carol Shelby. It's, time. But, but, you know, for me, it's always been, you know, what does it sound like? What does it feel like? What does it, you know, go in there? And that interior, we spent a ton of time. And there was a lot of heated discussion over how that it was going to be because a lot of us you know you always had the twin brow right like that was passenger and driver had the twin brow that's been consistent through the six generations mm -hmm. previous in your and we'll have you sit in here in a second when you sit in there this cockpit envelops you and so the twin brow is kind of gone mm -hmm. um, and we discussed that at length it was a key piece of it but carrying that forward making it that performance that's close at hand that feeling of that advanced technology of sitting into a cockpit when you sit in there you feel it wrap around you and it's actually pretty cool um, and then beyond that the actual 12.4 uh, inch and the 13.2 inch screens that are connected through a magnesium frame and behind one piece of, of, of uh, glass, plastic, is clear. It's gonna be fairly um, light then. Yeah, it is, um, you can personalize your technology, right? So when you go in there, the, the, the center stack, is actually controlled by Unreal Gaming technology that is the same stuff you use in Rocket League, yes. right? Like, mm -hmm. and the coding and Craig Sandvig and the design team that did that in there. Like, I, the first time I sat in the car, I'm not kidding. I did, it took me 50 minutes, five zero minutes before I started it. Wow, you're just playing around with everything. Playing gets. around, yeah. I mean, and, and it's and so for my generation, it's a little advanced, right? It's the technology. You know, I come from Gen Five when the cones were so deep. If you remember, in there, right. like the old school Gen One vehicles. Um, it it it's it's an evolution that is functional to what I want to do. And for the younger generation who grew up personalizing their phones and their technologies, they can now personalize it from the interior like you know i would go out there and i'd put different stripes and different wheels and you know maybe a, i don't know front splitter and you know go to classic design concepts and buying a little lower valence piece which i've done um on the 06 that my girlfriend's son has like we've done, <laughs> he does the work i'm i'm the marketing guy he's a, he's studying to be an engineer but 
that's how like old school you you personalize it and now you can personalize it through the technology and when we did the focus groups the younger audiences like there's a common thread of people who love sports cars and love mustangs right mm -hmm. regardless of your age your demographics it's that common thread of freedom the vacation you take every day but how you display that is different over the demographics and the age group and each of them to the younger ones to the to the ones who are saying oh my god like this is you know welcome to the 21st century technology this is so cool and they were playing with it and then the older folks actually one of the guys was quoted as saying i'm sorry he wasn't quoted we videoed it right and he sat there and he was closer to my age and he sat there and he goes I think I could launch a rocket from this thing. <laughs> I mean, so it's kind of like that it, it meets the, the current audience and then can grow with the new audience. And that's why we're so cool with it. Like you spin the car, like literally in there, you can spin it and you select that, okay, you want to change your exhaust. The exhaust actually shows through through the car and the colors change based off of how you've set it. Hmm. Okay. You want to do the drift mode, which has a, we have a drift mode right. in this vehicle, right? Yeah. Which is just on the performance packages. And we had Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Chelsea D'Onofrio working with our engineers. Chelsea Vaughn in driver's seat, engineer in passenger seat, hooked up to the computer, connected to the processor, and we're adjusting the brake bias. So like, okay, Vaughn, what do you want it to feel? Well, wow. I need it to take up here. I need it to lock up like instantly when it comes in there. And then on the screen, so then when we put all that technology, because you really need a drift brake in a car, track use only, please. Right, yes. don't do that on the right. highway. Um, but then uh, graphically, how you display it, so you go in there, you hit drift mode, pops up and says track use only. Then it puts in there and um, it, it, uh, it, it disengages some of the things on there. Then you sure. hit the info button and will actually show you the pattern of what you're trying to do. And then on the left hand side in the text, explaining what's happening in your car. Wow, so if you're running the same drift track over and over, it improves. It, it, it doesn't improve, because I can't, I can't say that it learns, right? It's not learning sure. technology, but we developed it so it can start you off as a beginner and you can advance in your performance in it. But like it actually shows you visually, graphically, what the car is supposed to be doing when it does. Like, so it's 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 technology that's helping teach people as well as personalize it, which I just think is so cool. Um, and then for like folks like us, it has the Fox body. You can switch the right. gauges to the Fox right. body if you want. There's a calm mode on there. I'm sure not many people are going to use the calm mode. But mm -hmm. then you have the the track mode, and you have the sport mode, and you have the normal mode, and then you have the um, Fox body modes that you can put in. It's so much fun to personalize it. And then on the my mode, there's six of your my Mustang modes that you can program. So not only for different drivers, but maybe the different moods that you take, right? Sure. Like if it's a really stressful day and you're leaving your office at six o'clock and you want to drive under the underpass and like just rev the engine so you can feel it reverberating up against the underpass in there, you could have the stress reduction mode <laughs> you know, setting on there. Sure. It's just so much fun. And I can't wait for the people to get into this car, which will be into the dealerships and we're staying early early summer um, that, to get behind the wheel and experience the seventh generation of Mustang. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool technology. And then just to go back a little bit earlier, we mentioned Von Gettin and Chelsea yeah. Denofa, who are actually professional uh, Formula Drift drivers who race Ford yeah. Mustangs of yeah. all things in Formula Drift. So if you want anybody to program your Mustang on how to drift, that's yeah. definitely Two time to do world champion. Oh, yeah. Yep, Von, who's who announced on Sunday. He said right? he's coming back yeah. before. We were out in uh, LA. Um, we were at Race Services Garage um, and we unveiled his car mm -hmm. uh, we unveiled Chelsea's car and then James Dean who came over from Ireland mm -hmm. who is like I believe he's six seven like the dude yeah is he's a pretty big guy all dude. yes we did his right hand drive yeah. oh really his car is right hand drive because he that's where he grew up and, right. and if you can think of drifting right like more so even than track driving like your body position and where you're trying to get the car is so tied into your orientation like and he grew up on that and we were able to do it because Mustang goes you know, to right-hand drive markets. So yeah. it was really cool. We unveiled it there. And all their cars are S6, the S650, S6 right? Yeah, they started off Very in the cool. first weekend and made it to the quarterfinals, right? Um, Chelsea did and uh, James Dean did. Now they didn't make it into the round of four semifinals, but, but for the first time out and was actually 
texting with Vaughn today, like they've learned some things yeah. about, you know, the first time taking the car out in competition, sure. like movie competition, where the car can advance, which is going to be really cool. And we're all excited about it. Yeah, that's a really cool development. So the dark horse here, you would say, is probably the better track focused version. Um, yeah. Them, so right? if you think of um, like Mach 1 mm -hmm. on the, the Gen 6 or yep. um, even Bullet to a certain extent, although Bullet was less some upgrades. There's some yeah. upgrades to it. Um, this is our, you know, pinnacle in the 24 model year of your, you know, track performance car. Um, and track can be defined as cone course, right. you know, drifting. Yep. <laughs> um, but where this one is, you know, this one is the pinnacle of what we've done in a five liter naturally aspirated is the road course. So like you could take this car out on a track day, you know, do your normal braking miles, <laughs> drive it out to the track, you know, adjustable, you can adjust, you know, the strut tower mount adjustments that you can put in there, set up the camber that you want off of it, take it out on the track, reset it, drive it back home. Wow. Um, yeah, that's... For kind of way, and by that track day, I mean like a track day, right? When you're doing a 20 minute, 30, 20 minute sessions and breaks in between. I'm like, That's, this is the this is the pinnacle one we've done in the base GT line, you know, with the base five liter engine. And we can't wait for people to get into it. Yeah, yeah, I definitely understand that. You guys are also launching a ton of race cars alongside the new S650 generation as First well. First time when we launched, when we revealed in September, and I've been on Gen 5 reveal, Gen 6 reveal, and now Gen 7, that's the first time we've had the race cars shown at the same time, right? If you oh, see okay. it at the end of that video, and then Bill Ford comes out and walks out and says, oh, we hope to go back to Lamar, right? At, at the end of it, we had, and we just unveiled the, the Cobra Jet, the right. E-Series Cobra Jet. I think it was this the week, maybe. Uh, <laughs> make sure we get that correct. Sure. Um, but in there, um, so you had the Cobra Jet, and then you have some of the track cars, and you know the supercar in Australia, the Super 8s that they yep. run. All of those cars were ready. Like we, we showed that we didn't show the actual physical vehicles, but we showed the video and all of those vehicles, and then one under the cover um, that are going to be you know available on the seventh gen Mustang for professional racers to those that want to go out and do track days. Wow. Okay. So that's a huge push for Ford into the motorsports realm. Then is that? Um, I mean, uh, it, Ford's always been involved. Been Mustang, if you think Mustang started, right? Won the right. Tour de France. Tour, uh, Tour de France when it was not a bicycle race. It was a car race in 1964. <laughs> uh, Alan Mann's team prepared by Holman Moody. Those mm -hmm. Mustangs finished one, two, and three. First time out racing. And then, you know, Ken Miles taking the Shelbys out in February and yep. St. Valentine a massacre where he goes out and won you know SCCA production B that first and second year that it was in there. Um, we Mustang has you know it started off as the vernacular of you know the secretary's car if you go back to the aids you know the, sure. the ads back in the age. Um, and you know Carol would say oh you know uh, Lee Iacocca you know hey you got to make this a race car and his famous quote is well you can't make a racehorse out of a mule <laughs> and then what does he do he builds the 350s on the Mustang class Platform that actually goes out and wins, you know, SCCA championship. Yeah. We've always been involved in racing in Mustang in some sort, sometimes not in sanctioned body events, right? But Mustang has been a part of that performance and part of that performance culture leads to the stuff that you can do on the streets and vice versa. Like the engineering, you know, from the stuff that we're learning off of the dark horse, the Ford performance engineers from both the racing perspective and the um, on track perspective. And the ones that go on the side are in the same building, right? Like, like, so it's been part of it. It's just so cool that we've launched it. And at the same time, we revealed the Mustang. You know, we've done the, you know, the Cobra Jets, the 50 year Cobra Jet in there. We did the, the, the old E Cobra Jet off the Mach-E. Um, you know, the FPS 350S, uh, the Boss 302 S's. Like we've done the 500C if you go way back. We used to, uh, 2007, I think we displayed it at Barrett-Jackson in Scottsdale before mm -hmm. we started coming here. Um, so they've had them, but it hasn't been part of the actual reveal aspect of it yeah. and that ties that performance in and, and everybody's excited about it right sure. you know this isn't like sponsoring NFL football right, right. The, we are the means of competition right and and that's where you learn and you, you prove your metal and it's and 
we've been doing it for a while. It's just nice that we did it at the reveal in a consistent fashion. Like, hey, here's what we're doing. Sure. Do you guys have any specific goals that you're hoping to jump into? For Win everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Second place this is the first loser. Uh, no, I mean, the competition out there, um, yeah, there's, uh, they're evaluating the series and they're looking at the things to do. And, you know, we're always looking for things, you know, from the, you know, not only the off-road stuff like we're doing, you know, King of the Hammers stuff with the Broncos that we do. Sure. Um, the performance team is always looking at where we compete. Okay. So we obviously highlighted a lot about the exterior, but we should quickly hop into the interior. Yeah, I want you to sit in, there, in right? here. Here we go and put the keys. Now remember, this is a pre-production vehicle. But you oh, do wow. need to get in. These are with the Recaro, the optional Recaros. Ooh, that's that's good. So that is going to be that lateral support as you're going around the apex yeah. of a turn. You oh, don't want to be sliding off. Yeah, you know, I that's mean, good. some of the old drivers would tell you, like, in their cars, they'd be sliding across, <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. I've got an SN95. And yep. So, um, yeah, these seats and the SN95 would be amazing. And fully functional with airbags and all the safety restraints, that, uh, the safety systems that you need. But if you don't put your foot on the brake, you can just hit the, the little red start button without the foot on the brake i think the keys in there. the screen oh, but you wow. see how you feel like your position like in it, it's yeah the it's angles wrapped, everything yeah it's position to the driver yep, and everything's within different reach than the, you know the old dual brow so this yeah. is the track you know the track set and this is a pre-production unit sure um you know you can see how you can set up where the rpms are you can then sh set your shift points oh wow on there okay. um you can set your launch control rpm um this is where you can do your line lock and the big sure. wheel and smoking tire shows up on it yeah um and then if you hit the little mustang button over there on the toggle switch that's a cool button now it shows and sees what you can do off of it right okay you can, wow you can the spin graphics that are really go ahead good. and talk to the screen right you can move the screen okay that's and then if you hit into um Custom mode, if you go to custom mode. Hey guys. So if you hit the, like you hit the, the, the suspension setting where it says sport. That's right? cool. And now you can spin that. You can kind of show <laughs> all the way around in there. Um, wow. If you go back into the, uh, hit the return button and then you go to track apps and then you go to hit the drift brake. Now it says okay, track use only, hit okay, and now yeah. it's going to say disabled because of what we're doing. We haven't set up the car yet. Oh, okay. um, hit the little I button next to the drift brake. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So that's what you were talking about earlier there. Yeah. And then, so if you go back a little bit, and then you can see in some of the other video we'll provide you, if you go back sure. and then go to one more back, and then you put in the, uh, uh, let's do cluster theme. And you can scroll up and hit the Fox uh, body. Very nice. Oh, <laughs> like wow. With the, yeah, that brings back some memories. Doesn't it? Green, yeah. So, you know, it's it, it pays homage to the heritage and then looks forward, you know, for the future generations and the other graphics, which is pretty cool. Yeah, lots of heritage mixed in with going forward with the Dark Horse brand. That's cool. Yep. And that's Very available cool. on EcoBoost and Mustang GT and Dark Horse. And obviously the startup screen's a little different. It doesn't have the sure. Dark Horse pony, but yeah, you know, that's technology that's across the board in Mustang, which we're extremely proud of. Yeah, this is a very cool leap forward. So with that, I guess, thank you, Jim, for no, taking us you. through the Mustang. This is awesome. So with that, that's going to be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, can hit that like button for us. We really appreciate it. And then you and can take the keys. <laughs> so here's the key for the dark horse. Very cool. So with that, it's going to be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, can hit that like button for us. We really appreciate it. Consider getting subscribed for more content like this in the future. And of course, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Wow.